All right, everyone, welcome back to me, your host, Christian Watts, and it's so good to be with you in one of my video commentaries. Whew, man, we have had a very rough news cycle recently with everything from the COVID to the martial, the musings of martial law. And also, many of you may not find this necessarily rough, but I do. We have also had a lot of progressives, leftists, trying to stake their claim in Joe Biden's incoming administration with one thing, the idea of diversity. So for them, let's understand what diversity means, because the, the political article says, lawmakers to Biden, step it up on cabinet diversity. And the tagline says, the next administration will feature a number of historic firsts, but lawmakers and advocates of color are pushing for more. My goodness. So you immediately see the premise of this entire thing in the tagline, advocates of color. And so to these people, their color is a marketable commodity that they can use to garner certain political favors, certain political things. And this is, of course, Biden with Mr. Clyburn of South Carolina, who was largely credited with getting him to the Oval Office in the first place. And so the article begins, the faces of the economic team President-elect Joe Biden unveiled publicly Tuesday included an African-American woman, a man born in Nigeria, and an Indian-American woman, and just one white man. Just one white man. The response from Asian-American, Black, and Latino Democrats? It's not enough. And it goes on to say, those pre-mentioned, aforementioned individuals want more representation, particularly in the cabinet. Jim Clyburn spoke out last week about the need for more diversity in Biden's burgeoning administration. More black, Latino, and Asian American lawmakers are joining the courage, of course. So, here's what's going on here. <laughs> A lot of people have this very warped idea that if a certain group of people is composed of a certain appearance. That's all that group is. They are, as we say in philosophy, reductionists. They like to reduce a holistic thing, a holistic mass, down to a single quality. And when you worship at the altar of identity, this problem becomes compounded. So, for example, you have not heard, you will not see in this article, any real discussion of the merits of these people. The entire pre actually, you can't even have the merits in the premise of this argument. Because the premise of this argument, and the premise of an argument, if you guys are familiar with argumentation, is how everything else in the argument goes. So the premise should necessarily follow and lead to the conclusion. If the premise is tainted, the conclusion cannot be logically connected to the premise. The premise of this argument is, if we don't have enough brown faces or Asian faces or Latino faces in Joe Biden's cabinet... What's happening? What's happening is communities are not being represented. So we're taking a single quality of someone. We're literally destroying their spiritual value, their moral value. And we're saying, no, this single quality is going to represent an entire group of people who are affiliated by nothing more than their skin color. That is rank collectivism. And that is, quite frankly, it reeks of crypto racism. It's not necessarily... Total racism, it's crypto racism. Well, Christian, the GOP is the party of old white men, so what? And that's not why the GOP is having problems. The race of someone does not necessarily confer a certain position. To think so is racist. To think so is ignorant. To think so is wrong. The race of someone, the skin color of someone, does not necessarily tell you very much about them. But the problem is, we live in a time in which identitarians, both the left and the right, are creating these false notions, these majestic notions, that if you are a certain skin color, and that skin color is predominant or not predominant, you therefore need to be put into a certain social strata that is meant to correct that injustice. Many people are hailing Kamala Harris's victory as vice president because she's a woman, Indian American, and African American, or whatever. But they completely use that at the exclusion of the fact that she perpetuated the war on drugs. The fact that she wants to destroy private health care insurance. The fact that she does not believe that individuals can make their own decisions by themselves. She does not believe in human freedom. She eschews natural law. But all those things go away because apparently she's a woman. Ladies and gentlemen, we have got to stop being biological determinists. Someone's womanhood, manhood, 
black, blackness, whiteness, Asian, whatever, does not have any substantial bearing on their merit, does not have any substantial bearing on their moral paradigm, does not have any substantial bearing on what they're going to do in office. Has none. It only has bearing because Americans are shackling themselves to the block of mediocrity in believing that a race is this godlike divine quality. We are basically the cult of race now. So how do we fight it? You've got to stop seeing people's race. Race is an utter illusion. We are all homo sapiens. We are all fundamentally individuals. We all have the same freedoms. We are equal in nature, if not equal in abilities, attributes. We're equal in nature. We have the same rights, natural freedoms. That should be the focus of any social disquisition on a candidate, not their race. This corrupt notion of race that is permeating the Obama administration, um, in, in, the, in the Biden administration, and will eventually be permeating the White House, must be stopped because it is not has no bearing on reality. If a concept does not correspond to reality, people, that concept is bankrupt and must be yoked away. It must be taken away like the yoke. As the ancient texts say, break the yoke. Break the yoke of mediocre, mediocre thinking and break the yoke of racial pretension. Because if you don't, America will continue to have a poverty of values. It will continue to ignore the principles that animate our humanity and bind our existence to this great nation. Think on it. As always, people, I love you, and please stay pensive.